Hey there, I'm Ken. This is Canadian Retro Things. Welcome. Today, I'm going to build something for my Atari 2600. I don't know what project I want to do for my Atari 2600, but I'm going to find one by going on to the sponsor of today's video, PCB Way where you can get PCBs starting as low as $5 for 10 boards. I'm going to go onto their website into the shared projects page. We're going to find a project that I want to build. And then I'm going to show you how to order it, how easy it is to get that. And then when it arrives, I'm going to build it. So without any further going on about this, let's get onto the computer and find a project to build. The first thing is going on to the PCB website at pcbway.com. From the home page, you click Shared Projects. In the search bar, put what you are searching for. In this case, something for the Atari 2600. Then, choose your project. From the project page, you can see details about it and you can add it to your cart. Once it's added to your cart, everything will be pre-filled out for the board specifics. There are some things you can change if you want, like the solder mask color, but most of it should be left alone. Once you are satisfied, you can save it to your cart and you must wait for the build to be approved. For me, this took about 20 minutes. Once it had been approved, I proceeded to check out where I had to fill in my delivery address, shipping method, and payment information. And I was done. Five days later, I checked my mailbox and there was my package from PCB Way. I filmed a really, really nice artistic video opening the box up and seeing those cartridges for the first time. But unfortunately, I guess I must not have hit record on the camera or something because later when I went back and checked it, uh, yeah, no video. So I'll just give you a quick play-by-play -play action of what happened. I got the package, I brought it home, I set it on the desk, I took out my X-Acto knife, I cut it open, and there, nicely packed inside, were the cartridge PCBs. See now, can you imagine what you missed by not seeing that? Oh well, let's move on from this mistake and continue with the video. And here are the cartridges I've gotten from PCB Way. And these are the parts that I need to build them. I have got my ceramic capacitors. I need a 100 nanofarad and a 100 picofarad. I need two 10k resistors and it's not actually on the list but if you look on the board right there there is a uh, another resistor that says 2k2 now I'm going to assume that means 2.2k so got some 2.2k ones there my 27C512 programmable chip there. And it's also got a socket. And the dip switches that I'm gonna need. And the last thing was the hardest to get. I got all of these basically at the same time that I got the cartridges. I then needed either an ATF-20V8B or a GAL-20V8A uh, lot pro programmable logic chip. So I ordered one of each, well, a bunch of each, to see which one would get there faster. They both took about a month and a half to get to me. And by that time, I was already gone to my cabin. And uh, so they had to take basically another week to get out here to me. Now, I don't have any 24-pin narrow sockets, so 
I've got a 16 pin and an 8 pin. And I'm going to combine those to make my socket for the logic chip. So it's time to uh, get everything programmed into the chips and soldered onto the boards. The files for programming the logic chip are available on the website right here on the PCB Way website. I have had to do a little bit of trial and error with uh, burning the games onto the chip here because there's not a lot of information about how to do this exactly. So things that I have discovered, um, all of the programs must be exactly 16K, which means that they will be up to hex 3FFF. And of course, the next number where the next game will start is 4,000. And that'll go up to uh, just before 8,000. And then the next one after that is just before C000. So I've got a couple of 16K games here. So what I'm going to do is I'm in this hex editor. So I will copy them. And paste them into a new program. As you can see, this one goes up to 3FFF. Next game. Add that on to the end of the other one. And as you can see, it goes up to 7FFF. One more 16K. And now the final one is a little bit interesting because the code for this one is 4K. So it goes up to FFF. So what I did is I pasted in a bunch of uh, blank, basically, um, I guess, 12K of blank spots to take it up to the required 16K. So now we can copy that one and add that on to the end. And now we will save this as a binary file. Uh, we will call it four games dot binary. Now, go over to my burner. I've already got it set to the W27C512, which is the chip that I'm burning this onto. I will make sure that this chip is erased. It is erased. Now I will load in the binary file that I just made, which was four games dot binary. So our games are in place. Now program it and hope that this works. And we are just about ready to put this into the cartridge and try it out. Next thing we have to do is program that logic chip. I have decided to go with the Gel Gel 20V8A. So let's put that in the board or in the reader. All 
All right, it's in the reader now. Let's read, see if there's anything on it. Now, let's load up our JED file that we downloaded. And program. Verify. Oh, we're getting an error. This might be a bad chip. This is why we use sockets on the cartridge in case one of these don't work. cartridge is together it's hooked up into my Atari 2600 junior and I'm ready to try it out however I did actually have to change a couple of the games that I put on it because uh, they didn't seem to be working quite properly so I believe these games are working properly so let's take a look There we go. Okay. We've got Xenophobe. Working great. Change one of the switches. And we've got Double Dragon. That's right, Double Dragon on the Atari 2600. Which works. Now we'll switch it around to a different setting. We've got Berserk. works just fine. Now, this last game is the 4K game I put on here. And this is actually a game that I'm beta testing right now for 8 bits in the basement. Peter over in France uh, has done a series of videos on his channel looking at programming for the Atari 2600 and he has made this game as his very first game. So um, it's not out yet but uh, yeah I'll link Peter's channel down below and then uh, you'll be able to watch the videos about the making of this game. In the game you are a hedgehog and it's a game that takes a lot of timing. And you're eating these little dots, which are fireflies. And you have to get them. They go from green to yellow to red. And you have to get them before they turn red. And you have to avoid the things in the center that are there to kill you. And 
and that's what happens if you don't get it before it explodes. Basically, the fireflies explode after they turn red. So, uh, nice little uh, quick pick up and play game that Peter made here. And yeah, I'll link to Peter's channel down below and you can check out the making of this game and find out more information about when, when this will be available for the public. There we go. The cartridge is working. Now, full disclosure, I said that I had to change a couple of games over on it because a couple of the uh, ROMs that I burnt on there, they just didn't seem to work right. For instance, I had Junior Pac-Man and when I went around the screen, none of the dots got eaten. So I changed that one out and the other one that I chose worked fine. Uh, and the Junior Pac-Man worked fine in an emulator, the code, so not sure what was going on there. Maybe it was just uh, something happened when I burnt it onto the EEPROM that changed it, or maybe something changed in the hex editor, I don't know. But uh, yeah, the cartridge is working, and it is that easy to go onto the Shared Projects page on PCBWay, find yourself a project, and have some fun building it, and then playing with it. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, you know what you can do with the liking, the subscribing, and the commenting below because anything and everything you do is always greatly appreciated. I guess uh, time to play with some more Atari 2600, and I will see you next time.